as if as a researcher so you're in artificial intelligence you were at the university of central florida and now you're at open ai when you start applying this to your own career does this make you have like mental breakdowns then? because it's like <laughs> You want yeah. you want to have you know human beings. We want to have progress. We want to know where we're going. How did do, how does how does somebody like you then begin to integrate this into your life? Well, it's it's true that it, it sounds um, it sounds counterintuitive. But the, the thing about this this kind of idea, this principle, is that it always seems counterintuitive. But then if you really think about it, it actually makes sense. Um, and so, like the way that I think about it is that instead of like if I was trying to do something like, I guess, trying to create AI, that would be very objectively driven. That would not be like a novelty search. And then I would basically need to say, there's some measurement of progress. Like here's what I'm trying to do on the road to this final far off achievement that I'm trying to get to. But, but I can approach that differently because I mean, probably that's not a great way to do things in general, just because it is, it is such an ambitious thing. It's kind of blue sky that we may not know what the stepping stones are. And so another way of thinking about this is instead of trying to make progress, you can try to open up playgrounds, like new places where tons of low hanging fruit might exist, which then leads us to gaining huge amounts of insight that can lead us to another step. So by playground, I kind of mean stepping stone, but I kind of, I call it a playground because it's like a place where you can play around and try new things. And so I think I try to seek out like new playgrounds, like something that is like involves so much possibility that it would just be really interesting to explore there as opposed to, oh, this is better than something else, which is a more kind of objective view of things. And, um, and so it's really about being keyed in on what's interesting um, at any given time. And that word constantly comes up when talking about this, this novelty search stuff is the word interesting or interestingness. It's like, it, that's another kind of way, maybe a more better way than saying novelty is saying what's interesting. Like I do things because they're interesting, not because they lead towards something that where I know where they're leading. Cause often things are interesting. And I don't know where they lead and that's why they're interesting. Um, and I'm willing to pursue things that are interesting. Um, and I also believe that that's not a random statement. Like some people are like, well, it's just totally random. You just like it. You know, what, who's to say that this is actually useful. But I think that if you think something is interesting and it's in an area where you know some things, like you're not completely ignorant, then probably, you know, we should take you somewhat seriously. Like you have an instinct. That's one thing humans are good at. We have like a nose for the interesting and we can follow those intuitions and see where they lead. When I, when I read your book, I had not uh, dove deeply at all into philosophy. I mean, I'd taken a few classes in mm. college and I just kind of stumbled around. But in the yeah. last few years, I've done a bunch of reading into Nietzsche and, and uh, Goethe and uh, Carl Jung. And I would say that as I read what they're talking about, mm. um, and as far as being interested or finding your daemon, it all appears to me that they are saying the life well lived is the one where you allow your curiosity, your, your, the thing to capture you and then become inhabited by it in some way. And I don't even think they mean it in some like cosmic religious way. Mm. They're basically saying there is something deep inside of you, that voice that says you should go over there. Even when everybody tells you, Hey, that's a, that's a bad mm. idea. You shouldn't go over there. And there was one day when I was sitting around with my buddies and we were talking about novelty search and it cracked mm. into my mind, just like suddenly novelty search is the daemon in some, in some way. Yeah, that, that is an interesting insight. Um, it does seem compatible with that idea. And I, I know philosophers have said some, some related things. I think we have a quote, a quotes from a couple of them in our book, actually, um, that, that we used like to, to just um, represent the, the ideas in novelty sources. They're not, they're not actually completely new. I mean, people have had thoughts like this for a long time, um, that there's this kind of liberating way to free yourself um, and just pursue what you feel deep inside is the right thing to pursue. And there may not be an objective justification. Like, why are you doing this? Like, why are you going to art school? Like when you could just become a doctor. 
you know, but, but you just feel deep inside, like that's just what it's, I'm meant to do. I just feel like I should do this, which I, I mentioned that since I visited an art school and met all these artists and they were telling me about this um, and how the book made them feel better because they couldn't objectively justify like to their parents or their teachers, like why are they going to art school? Um, and so I, I think, you know, the, what's diff, what's new here, it's, I think for a long time, you know, maybe millennia, people have had this feeling like that you can, there's a kind of way to liberate yourself where you just follow your passion. But I think what's new here is that what we're saying is there is a principal justification for that. Like, it's not just some kind of fluffy, uh, well, I'm not saying that they're being fluffy, these philosophers are sophisticated, <laughs> but it's not just philosophy. Like, we've got experimental evidence of why this does lead to more interesting discoveries. You know, because of the fact that we don't know where the stepping stones lead, somebody needs to go down those unknown stepping stones and find out where they lead. And it's true, they're not always going to lead somewhere good. I mean, that's that's the price of exploration. But on the other hand, the price of not exploring is that you'll never find all those amazing things that are out there that we don't know the stepping stones to lead to them. And so it is it is the new thing that maybe the new insight here is that, yes, this is a this is a appealing philosophy, but it's also principled to actually follow the philosophy. It's a way it is the way that we make great discoveries. And therefore, you should not just feel good for yourself, but you should feel good that you're justified in actually doing it. Your book was a, a very odd blend of being, you know, computer science-ish, but then also uh, kind of self-help yeah. would be a little bit too <laughs> fluffy in and of itself. But did you, like, wh who are you intending would read that book when you wrote it? That's a good, yeah, that's a really good insight. Um, the book is like that. Um, and uh, yeah, this was a real struggle in writing the book, like that we, we wanted to reach like a really broad audience, but I was also worried about watering down the argument. Like there's a scientific argument in there, which is based on these computer experiments. And that's like very computer science-y. Um, and the thing is like, what I, I realized that the, that the ultimate conclusion is like very self-helpy in a way, um, but that on its own, it's it's just like just like a, one of a million self help kind of books. I mean, it's just going to be um, like you know, go follow your passion and do what you really want to do. Like, good for you. Here's a pat on the back with this book. But I wanted it to be like a very a serious scientific justification. So the book, in effect, would be like a weapon. Like you could really, because there's a lot of people who won't let you follow this kind of path, like in practice, which is one of the reasons we wrote the book. Like my perception is that society, like our society and our culture is totally about objectives. Like from when you're just a little kid, like you are driven by metrics and objectives, like measurements and whether you're going on the right path. And then we know where you're supposed to get when you get to the end point. And every step of the way, you have to justify yourself. You're justifying yourself to your boss, to your teachers, to the people who provide you funding, whoever it is, it's all objectively driven. And so I think that that is to me is the status quo and the book is supposed to be a, a weapon to argue against the status quo. And so for people who feel like things need to change in their organization, in their school, um, in their discipline, like if you think things need to change or even in your family, like it wouldn't, I don't think it would be effective just to have a self-help book that makes you feel better about yourself. I think you want something which is really, really grounded in serious scientific evidence and arguments and then you can use it and you can say, look, you should look at this book. This has a very serious uh, set of evidence that justifies the choices that I'm saying we should really make, why we should change as an institution. Um, and then uh, when going through that reasoning, I realized that it comes out to this bizarre amalgam of things. It's like this self-help slash like science book slash computer science and uh, I and Joe pissed every, and must have pissed everybody off, right? There's no, there's no I publisher mean, that was like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. We, we really struggled. I mean, we, we had an agent for a while who was like, kind of works in the, like the popular publishing, like, like um, regular publishing industry. And, you know, he was, he was suggesting things to water things down that would make it more appealing to like mainstream publishers. But then I was like, I don't, I felt like that's, like selling out in a way. I mean, nothing against the agent. I mean, he was a good agent. I mean, he had good good suggestions if he wanted to do that. But I just couldn't bring myself to 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 water it down because I just wanted it to be like the definitive argument. So it, it turned out to be a not very well 
position from a, like a marketing perspective. You know, it's like it, it's not really appealing to anyone in particular, any demographic, really. It just is the argument that I wanted to make, that we wanted to make, um, Joel and I. And and we tried to make it as like palatable as we could, so, but but obviously there was some compromise there. Thanks for checking out this podcast short. If you like this interview, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and hit that bell so you always get notified about this podcast. And if you're really interested in conversations like this, you may want to consider joining the Articulate Ventures Network. To find out more, go to network.articulate.ventures. Yeah.